you again, Eric. Um, next we have Susanna Aslan to talk about Citizen Voices Driving Federal Policy, a dream, a dream Come True. Susanna serves as Communications Manager and Program Associate at America Speaks, which is the national leader in large-scale citizen engagement. So she knows a lot about this, and we're really excited to have her here. Susanna. Hi, good evening. So what I'm talking about is we're now in a special moment where finally, perhaps, Citizen Voices will help drive federal policy. Oh, and here's the uh, intro slide again. So um, America, as a country, it has a very strong belief in government of the people, by the people, for the people. This is the Getty Burgess Address in 1863. About 150 years ago, we set ourselves to be driven by leaders who are chosen by the public to represent our views. Today, we're a bit more disaffected. There's a lot of apathy, there's a lot of polarization, and there are complex policy decisions that government alone can no longer address. Yet, with all of this in our back pocket, we stand here today with a new administration who is calling to tap into the vast and distributed expertise of the American citizenry to help government make more informed decisions. And it's this decisions spectrum that is the critical piece here. Just earlier this week, the long-standing Office of Public Liaison that was begun in the Nixon administration was rebranded into the Office of Public Engagement. And their mandate is to have a two-way dialogue. And I'm never going to get through all this, but the essence is that these two-way dialogues need to be national. And there's a lot of benefits for doing it. The public can have a greater voice. Policymakers and agency managers can achieve their missions in a better way. And the public can take action. So if this is what we're going to do, if we're truly going to have citizen voices helping to drive national decisions, what are the principles that will help us be successful? Well, the first one is making sure that we have a representative group of people who are participating. You cannot just have the usual suspects go out. Anybody who's involved in community organizing knows you need to go out and make relationships, go to existing communities. And I recommend highly looking at census data for the area, in this case, the nation, and then let's measure to make sure we're actually getting those people in the room. Secondly, informed participation. Balanced, accessible materials that helps everybody who's participating to have an informed view so that we can all have a conversation that builds. The third, process. You can't just push people together, whether it's face-to-face -to -face or online. Instead, it needs to be carefully crafted so that people can all voices are heard, people are working together, and they are um, all having a chance to, to have a conversation. The fourth principle is identifying shared priorities. It's fine if individuals are able to identify their views, but as a collective, what can we do to agree and then provide decision makers with a mandate? So there's a variety of ways to make decisions, technology or in person. The last one is linked to decision making. There is no value in having a conversation about policy unless the decision maker is on board at the beginning. This is perhaps the most critical principle that will help us be successful. So what does it look like to actually do this? To do large scale national discussions where citizens are wrestling with complex policy issues and providing informed mandate to decision makers? Well, it looks like a mix of online and offline. There's a variety of techniques. But the first thing that happens is education building awareness. A communications campaign that helps everybody know what's going on, both that it's happening and what the issues are. At peer-to-peer -peer recruitment, ways to um, get everybody involved in the process. And that goes on the whole time. When you start the conversation, framing the conversation. And we saw this with Google Moderator and the White House Open for Questions. People were able to submit the questions they wanted to have discussed. You can do that. You can do um, having people get together on Wikipedia and put together um, prosumer type fact sheets. Then the dialogue and deliberation, whether that's face to face, many sites connected by satellite, asynchronous, online things that are happening as chats or uh, telephone based conversations. And then coming out of that, expanding the net, refining shared priorities, using things like Mixed Inc. or getting together with stakeholders and having them to re review and make sure that you're bringing everybody in through the process. The next step is to sustain participation. We've all kind of gotten excited about something and then had it drop. Let us make sure that there's built-in mechanisms to keep people involved along the way, informed, activated, engaged. And then lastly, just as the last most important principle was linked to decision makers, this implementing public priorities is critical.
trust is something that is hard to regain. And if, you, and if we uh, bring the public together in national decision making and we don't see the implementation happen, there will be a great loss. And so millions of voices regularly bringing national discussions together can really change our democracy. It can change the role of public officials into something where they're working with instead of against. And lastly, it will create a community that all of us know needs to um, be here in our democracy. Thank you.